And hey gang, I'm my radar meteorologist Matt Bucci with a video breakdown for the anatomy of a tornado, how a tornado forms. We have some of the best footage out there. This is my radar storm chaser, Aaron J. Jack's footage of the Verdon, Manitoba tornado from last year, last August 8th. It was an EF2, EF3 tornado that unfortunately killed two people, but the visuals like this are stunning. So we pause it right here. First things first, this is a classic supercell thunderstorm. The entire thing is rotating. And I want to show you the background too. There's not much outside the storm. It was very dry that day. So you get a low precipitation supercell with nothing obscuring this textbook updraft. Over here on the left, a second storm going up to the south. This one not quite as fierce. And so as a result, not robbing this first one of energy. So this thing just sucks in air, sucks in moisture. Now, if we play it again briefly, we'll play it and then pause after about two, three seconds. Look at this. This is all inflow flowing in from the south, wrapping cyclonically counterclockwise around this storm. So all this inflow comes in like this, rotates in like this. This is fuel. Now on the backside, because keep in mind, these storms are like big mixers. On the backside, you get a lot more cold air wrapping down. So cold air comes back like this, warm, moist air fueling counterclockwise like this from the south. Here's where we really see that sink drain effect take place. Because like we said, warm, moist air comes into the south. We take a look and we can see cool air wrap around back here. But we start seeing something called a dry slot come into the equation. And that's key for tornado genesis because right back here, this cold air is wrapping around. Here's the updraft, warm air flowing up like this, wrap around right here. So you get this little dry slot, this thing right here, this dry slot, and this punches in this little area right here and tightens that rotation. So once again, warm, moist air flowing in like this, counterclockwise to so get like this, and it starts getting tightened by this little area of dry air that wraps around like this, almost kind of squeezes that rotation, and it squeezes it, makes it tighter, and that makes it spin faster. So let's show you how that dry slot evolves over time because that's key in that tornado genesis. Here you see it right here. When we play, you'll be able to see, look how much it squeezes in. Now we pause right here like this. We're actually in the dry slot looking north and west, and you can even see it's clear back here. Here's that dry air, the wedge moving right in. Now, one really cool thing about this particular supercell thunderstorm, the LCL, so lifting condensation levels, i.e. the cloud bases, are incredibly high. Look at this, we're probably talking 800 plus feet above the ground, which is why you have such a stunning view of this storm in the dry slot. It's not raining, there's no hail falling where Aaron is at this point. You're just looking at a classic developing tornado. And the really cool thing is, like we said, dry air on the backside, but here's that falling cloud getting tighter and tighter. Now, because it's dry, you're not getting that condensation funnel all the way to the ground, but in just a moment, you'll be able to see that debris starts getting kicked up because the tornadic circulation is reaching the surface. So we play once again, and you'll be able to see, give it two, three seconds, watch. Debris first starting right here, and we pause it. There's that debris really becoming prevalent. Then the whole thing becomes more intense. That funnel condenses all the way to the ground. But like we said, you're in the backside of the storm, so dry air wrapping around, it has a really sharp cutoff on the western side. And that's how these funnels, how these supercells work. You have all the rotation, the entire updraft going in like this. This is all that warm, moist air. And so you have incredible upward motion. And then everything over here, all this to the right, that's air coming down. And that's why to get all that air to come down, it has to go up somewhere, but over such a more narrow area. So that air has such an upward component. And that's why a tornado like this can become so strong. And if we can, let's advance it just one or two more seconds. I want you to focus over here. Okay, watch right over here. And actually let's play a couple more seconds. Maybe like one, two seconds. Okay, right like this. Perfect, focus on this area over here. We'll play one more second because I wanna show you, you can actually see the sinking air inside this clear slot. We're in the clear slot still. You can see that sinking air, watch. Ready, let's play. Right over here, okay? You can just barely see in the end. We'll back in just one second so folks can see. Right over here. So there's actually air sinking down like this and that's kicking up warmth and moisture coming in from the south. So that's kind of going up like this. And that's why we're in that area, the sinking air, kicking up warmth and moisture off the east, fueling the storm. And then eventually, tornado starts to rope out. The storm is kind of moving too fast for it, moves north and east. This thing kind of lollygags, stretches the column, and you get a longer column. And so that's why it gets narrower. Wind speed's probably a little stronger. Think about those finger trap things. You know, you, you pull your fingers apart, gets a little tighter. Same thing like this. So. Funnel's now tighter, spinning a little bit faster, but starts to kind of wither apart and die. But really amazing to see the entire life cycle of a tornado without anything blocking it. So now let's do a deeper dive 
and show you kind of step by step some of the up close video from Aaron. Really remarkable stuff. So here's some real time video showing you what it looked like on the ground. You can see it right down there. There's that debris. This tornado is on the ground causing damage, but you don't see that condensation funnel reaching the ground. Air flowing up like this. You can even see this right here, kind of a feeder band. We call this a beaver's tail, a wannabe beaver's tail. It's not fully developed yet, but that's air being ingested, rain cooled air. Now, if we pause for a second, You'll notice you don't have that on the left. Left is a kind of a clear place with nothing to worry about. On the right, you have rain, you have hail off of the north and east. So that air, a little more saturated, there's more moisture in it. And so as it moves into the tornado, the lower pressure inside the tornado condenses that moisture, which is why you get this scuddy stuff over here. You don't over here. So let me clear these for you. We'll play it once again. Pay special attention to all this stuff, like right here, rising into it. Nothing like that on the back side. Now we have a slightly different vantage point showing you beautiful tornado right in front of the sun. Unfortunately, beautiful, but deadly. And that's, that's kind of what you have to face with things like this. Even though they're mesmerizing to see, they do have that human impact. And that's something that we can't forget. Okay, let's play this out for you. You can see a couple more vortices right down here. Look how much debris is being suspended. You'll also notice little areas of more concentrated spin. So oftentimes you have a bigger tornado with little area of enhanced spin. We call these sub vortices. You can just barely see a couple rotating around. Oh, there. There was one right there, but then the camera moved. And you can see a couple more, like you'll see in just a sec. There, oh, there's one. Can we pause it and go back? It's gonna be real tough to spot. Let's pause it and actually see if we can find it. Go back like three or four seconds, right in the middle of the frame. There was a very brief sub vortex right there. Perfect, okay, did you see it? Okay, let's go forward a little bit. And folks at home, I know you're watching this too. It's, it's amazing footage. You'll see right here, look at that. This is incredible. So a suction spot, a small sub vortex, probably only three, four or five feet wide, if that. But that area of water vapor right here being condensed in the air with that localized low pressure. And that's why with tornadoes, you can have such amazing changes in damage over just a very short distance. You might go a couple feet outside this tornado, you have nothing, and then within the broader area of damage, this sub vortex comes through, adds another 50, 60 miles per hour on top of the damage, and suddenly, instead of just the background of 100 mile per hour winds in the larger area of spin, you have a corridor of about 160, 170, and that's why sub vortices play such a role in damage. And we'll see if we can go frame by frame with this. Let's just watch and see how this sub vortex evolves with time. If we can go really slowly, and look, it's gone right there. These things are so transient, they only last a couple of seconds, and they're due to very micro scale, very small scale wind effects within these tornadoes. It's remarkable to see, but, but Aaron just captured an incredible video. You can actually see back here, trees being shredded, denuded. There's that sub vortex over there. Yep, there it is once again. But the, the really interesting thing with tree damage, we know when a tornado goes through, it, it usually uproots trees because of that upward component of velocity. But really remarkable to see and all that debris suspended in the air. So sub vortices play a really big role. So now we have the tornado crossing the road. It's a really narrow one, but look at this. Okay, so house is going by right here, damage right there. This likely, unfortunately, where the fatalities occurred. Can we pause it for just a sec? Okay, now look right over here. This is what we call the ghost train, the rear inflow jet, because remember, tornadoes try to suck up air. All the air, it's warm, it's going up like this. Now, eventually, you can't just suck up the ground, so air has to start curving in like this, curving in like this, and so right near the surface, you get this little area where it's trying to suck all the air up, but it's pulling it directly from above the ground. You get this enhanced channel about 10 to 15 feet deep. So that's what you see right here. This is called that rear inflow jet or the ghost train. And oftentimes, if there's no debris, if there's no sand, you still get those inflow winds, but it's invisible. And that's why storm chasers, if they get close, they have to worry about this ghost train. So I'm gonna kind of get rid of that. Also pay attention, you can just barely see a trampoline in midair right here. You can see the, the kind of spoke sticking out the bottom of it, but that actually, let's go back probably five, six seconds and pay very close attention to this ghost train right down here. Here you see it, okay? Now let's see if we can play right over here. Perfect. Here's that ghost train, ready? Okay, yep, and there we go. All that inflow feeding into it like that. And you can actually see how tall this thing gets. Like, like I said, 15, 20 feet sometimes, just fueling into it, just amazing to see. And all this debris is suspended in the air. Now let's pause it one more time. I wanna show folks, we have debris all the way up here. We're probably talking about, I'd say, 150, maybe 200 feet above the ground. 
That's why tornadoes are so dangerous, even if you're not inside the funnel, because remember, what goes up has to come down. So even after this deadly circulation withers and dies, you still have all this stuff up in the air that can eventually come down. That's why these things are so dangerous and so deadly. You know, back in 1953, for example, tornado hit Worcester, Massachusetts, central part of the state. They had a French music box falling out of the sky about 40, 50 miles east and pieces of frozen mattress falling near Situate, Massachusetts, just showing you how much stuff is up there and comes back down even long after tornado has dissipated. Now, one of my favorite things is how tornadoes come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. And the really cool part, look, down here it's gray, it looks kind of stormy. And then in just a moment, you'll see the camera will pan upwards. It's sunny out here, and that's a really crazy thing. I've chased tornadoes before that are nice and sunny. This thing, I mean, it looks like from here over, nice peaceful blue skies, a placid evening scene. Then up here, it's sunny. And that just really goes to show you that tornadoes occur on the back side of a storm, usually the, the back right or kind of the, the southwestern side is where the tornado circulation will actually be found. And more often than not, it's on the sunny side of the storm. So anytime you get a warning, you might not get rain, lightning, thunder, hail, anything like that. You can actually get just the tornado as Aaron for the most part did with this instance. Now it's amazing to see. Tornado really laminar edges. It, it's a really strong tornado. So the edges are crisp. It's just a column of upward motion. And now you'll finally start to see it withering out as the storm moves north and east. It loses its support. And the crazy thing about this, it's like 8.20 at night. So the daytime heating is starting to be lost. You don't have as much heating of the ground to provide that upward oomph into the tornado. But as the storm pulls north and east, the vortex starts getting stretched like this, gets narrower and narrower. You can see it's, it's kind of fading away up there. But oftentimes, due to the conservation of angular momentum, you actually get a stronger vortex as it gets a little narrower and it whirs around and kind of moves around a little bit faster. Think about if you're on ice, you're an ice skater, you're spinning around like this, you pull in your arms, you're going to spin faster. Same thing here, which is why even in the decaying phases, tornadoes are very dangerous. And even up here, look at that kind of scuddy stuff being wrapped around the tornado. It's just amazing how much the tornadic circulation entrains stuff all around it. And like we said, dry slot right here. There's not too much in the dry slot. All that stuff is the wraparound on the backside. So an amazing, amazing video. It's, it's unfortunate seeing what happened with this tornado, the loss of human life. But this video provides a great example of what tornadoes are, what they do, and the science behind them, and really underscores what makes them so dangerous. Follow My Radar on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.